Hey everybody, thanks for watching the Arkansas Gun Guy. Today an unboxing of the CZ75BD. This is a full size CZ75. This is my first full size CZ75. I do have the smaller carrier version, which I've done videos on. And I've got the full size clone from IWI. That's one of my favorite guns ever. Uh, found this guy at a very aggressive sell price on Palmetto State and simply could not pass it up because I love all the design elements of the CZ75 series. So uh, without further ado, let's take a look at what comes in the box. First of all, you get the box, which has got the nice CZ logo, the CZ gold uh, handles, and nice cutouts here. Just nice details uh, from CZ. You also have to know that once you unlatch these two buttons, you also have to push here to open it. Some people get hung up by that. There's also a lock back there. Push here. The box opens. Inside the box, you get the firearm, two 16 round magazines, steel. Uh, up top, you get all the obligatory you get a brush, rod, your manual, which is thick. Uh, and pretty intensive. And the obligatory lock. So, you get all those normal things up there. No stickers, if that's important to you. Uh, put these things back here for now. Put this aside, take a look at the firearm. So, quick safety check, just get it out of the way. You saw there's no magazine. Firearm is clear. Uh, again, this is a CZ75BD model. The standard CZ75 is the B, which stands for firing pin block. The original CZ75 didn't have a firing pin, firing pin block. Later, they introduced the B version, which has the firing pin block, and it comes with a standard safety here as opposed to a decocker. The D, as you can guess, stands for a decocker. Um, now, backing up a bit more, if you don't know about the CZ75, this was a gun that was designed in the former Czechoslovakia and you guessed it, 1975. Um, at that time, they're under the Iron Curtain, and these are actually being produced more for export reasons uh, than use in Czechoslovakia. Uh, it wasn't until after the Velvet Revolution in 1989 that the Czech Republic began carrying their own handguns. They're all exported, uh, and I think they're still carried today, actually. And this is one of the most widely copied guns in the world, I think probably after the 1911. Um, so this guy's been around since 1975. And I looked online, I think I counted almost 20 different variants of people who have copied this design, including the IWI I mentioned earlier, uh, Tangfolio, uh, Gerson, Springfield. I think a lot, a lot of companies have the CZ75. And we'll look at it, but one of the most uh, iconic features of this gun uh, is the fact that it rides inside the rails, has an inverted rail system, and I'll show you that closer in a second. But that was actually wasn't invented by CZ75 or CZ in 1975. It's an evolution of the SIG P210 series that happened in the late 30s, early 40s, uh, with the design of the 210, which also has the inverted rails. But this version, this all the other design elements, this firearm, double action, single action, uh, the grips, everything else, the locking system, uh, are one of the most copied versions, one of the most copied designs in all of history. Uh, and for good reason, because it is a fantastic shooting firearm. Very low recoil, very accurate. So let's take a look at the CZ75BD. We'll start at the front. Um, this gun has not been fired yet. I did take it out and clean it up, and I've got fingerprints all over it again, uh, just before I put it on the air. But you can see the barrel protrudes, protrudes slightly from the slide. Turn this way. This is no, uh, the guide rod doesn't come out here. And you have the front dust cover that overhangs with no pick rail. They make several versions of the CZ75 that do and don't have pick rails. This one's the version that has the extended dust cover here, uh, shorter, shorter, uh, shorter frame and no pick rail. Um, up top you have, I think actually kind of small sights. I'm surprised how small they are. They're very reminiscent of the CZ75 PCR that I carry that have snag free sights on a very small gun. Those make sense. These sights actually look really small uh, for such a large gun. Um, continuing going up the top, I guess. You can see there's no cocking serrations on the front, only on the back. 
And again, one of the only two drawbacks I ever hear about these firearms is the fact that it's hard to rack the slide because you only have this much uh, to grab this much real estate to grab a hold of. Now, I'll also point out that, that since that's all you have to, grab, have to grab a hold of, that's also all the mass coming back at you, which helps really prevent muzzle flip because this is a pretty heavy handgun. Uh, and that weight combined with the fact that you have less mass coming back really, really kind of mitigates muzzle rise and helps you shoot much faster on target. Um, so that's one of my favorite designs of this firearm. I love the weight, I love the design. I love that low, re that low recoil, uh, low bore axis system. I'm gonna take a look at that around. You can see there's just very, very little, and you can see how the slide lies inside the frame there and up top. Again, most slides go around the outside and set much higher. So that is one of my favorite features of this firearm. Looking at the controls, they are right hand only. On the left side of the firearm, you've got your slide catch, slide release here. Your decocker I mentioned, just push down. Firearm goes to half cocked position. This side, nothing over here. Forgot to mention up top, you do have these uh, cuts here, just to reduce glare. I think that's always a very nice feature of these firearms. You have the trigger guard for a military grade gun is not really oversized. The H&Ks have massive trigger guards. This guy would be kind of hard to get your hand in if you had a glove on. Uh, now, in the full cock position, you have more room to get your hand in there. But in double action, single action, not a massive trigger guard. I'm probably not going to wear this with gloves anyway, but uh, just an interesting call out. You do have some texturing on the front of the trigger guard. Um, the bottom is smooth. Nice undercut here. Nice cut there. Again, I do like that they have interesting cuts to allow you to get your fingers in here. And that is a nice option there to get your finger in there as well as here for trigger placement. So you can get your finger up under here. On left hand, it's a switch. You get your finger in there. And if you had to, you could get your finger around there. So um, nice, nice cutout designs around there. Mag release again is this side only. And the grips are a hard plastic, but they're interchangeable. Uh, they make wood grips, uh, G10 grips, every kind of grips you can imagine for these guns. And one of my favorite features on this gun, as I've picked it up, I've not fired it yet, but I didn't notice on my CZ75, on uh, my, uh, sorry, my IWI Jericho, is this little ledge right here. It's hard to see from the side, but when you put your hands on there, it's a really nice thumb rest. Your thumb hits it just right. So you can see here, you can put your thumb on top of that and it rides perfectly. And again, it's another way to help you mitigate recoil. Not that there's a ton anyway, but that is a really nice feature that I don't recall seeing on my CZ, on my um, IWI Jericho. I keep calling it. Again, these are imported by the fine folks up at CZ USA in Kansas City, just north of us here in Arkansas. So uh, I have had some interaction with that, the customer service for my other CZ and love the customer service there. So the trigger pull, uh, I should get my lineman trigger gauge out. Actually, let me do that. Okay, I've got my handy dandy trigger gauge out here. Let's take a look at this thing in double action and single action. Um, so I know I should have this in a vise pulling straight back, so it's not perfectly uh, measured, but we'll take a measurement here, so it feels. Seven pounds, that feels a bit light versus what I was expecting. Eight pounds. Eight to nine pounds is what I was expecting when I started playing with it. Uh, that was 10 pounds, so yeah, not pulling straight back as I should. Eight and a half, I believe about eight and a half, nine pound double action trigger. Um, I'll look online for exact measurements and put that in the comments. But single action is a really sweet pull, so uh, that was too light. Three pounds, 11 ounces. Three pounds, nine ounces. Three pounds, seven ounces. So we'll call it three and a half pounds single action trigger. So very nice trigger in these things right out of the box. Again, take a look at it in action. The double action is a very heavy pull but it's smooth and once it's a wall right there, it breaks. So again, long, heavy pull. One of my favorite features of a hammer-fired gun is the safety that 
double action provides because you're not going to pull that on, on accident. So very smooth. Once it hits the wall, it breaks. The reset, pretty short. That's not too bad. Small bit of take up you can see there, and then a break. Look at that again. So reset, audible and tactile, and small bit of take up, and you're right back at the wall. That is a really nice reset. You know, I've heard the guys on Cajun Gunwork do magic on triggers, but that's a pretty solid trigger right out of the box. So, uh, fantastic trigger on the CZ75BD. Uh, feels a lot like my Jericho 941. It's just a really good trigger. So I can't wait to go shoot this to see how accurate it is. Um, let's take a look at the internals really quick. Again, two knocks on the gun you ever hear about. One, it's hard to rack the slide. Two, they're hard to take down because you have to do a couple of things. Again, remove the magazine. I've already done that. I'll cock it, take the tension off the slide. But there is a line right here and a line right here. You have to align those two, align those two lines. And while doing that, push this button through, which pops the mag release out, and you remove that. So I'll line these up first. And usually you have to do something. You have to take a tool to pop this out. It's too stiff. So I actually want to use the tabletop. I'll go off camera for just a second. Pop it down the table, and you can see that that pops out slightly. Just remove it. Easier said than done. There it comes. And there's your takedown lever. Now, at this point, you still can't remove the slide. I believe you have to decock it. That's how my PCR works. So, decock the firearm, and it comes right off. And there's the inside. Interesting finish on the inside. Again, I did go through and clean this up uh, when I first got it. I haven't shot it yet, but I did oil it up. It was very dry on the inside. Again, it's a very interesting finish inside there. Uh, it looks not great, but I guess it's coated for corrosion and other things. Uh, so, um, just a quick look at the internals. Again, a fairly short grip compared to how long the slide is. You got quite a bit of overhang, but it is a full length rail system. So the rails do go inside. Note, normally on most firearms, these, these slots are on the outside. Uh, but this lets the slide right inside the frame, which gives you that super low bore axis. One of my favorite, favorite features. Now, looking at the slide itself, you have a captured recoil spring, a short uh, recoil rod in there. I'm not sure the point of that. Usually it makes it tricky to, to reinstall. And then you have your barrel. Got your locking section there. So, looks almost like a 1911. Um, so, again, interesting finish on the barrel itself. So, we'll see how this thing wears over time. I'll have follow up videos. Uh, and then, a close up look at the inside. Again, nothing special on the finish inside. It doesn't look you know, amazing, but it looks like it's durable enough. So, also interesting, as I was cleaning this, I'm so used to be able to push a, a, um, a rag through here or a cleaning patch. Note that there's no exit wound here. So, if you get a cleaning patch down there, they're tricky to get out. Uh, and here are the rails on the outside of the slide, uh, which I think is just, again, my favorite part of this gun design of that. So, I know I keep talking about that. But let's look at the internals to reassemble it. Put the barrel back inside there. This is a little trickier because you don't have the guide rod to, the, um, the guide rod's not quite long enough to go inside of that housing. So it takes just a little bit of effort to hold the guide rod and pull in. It's not really hard. So it goes back like that. Again, that's much looser than I've ever expected. And then here's the magic. So grooves on the outside of the slide, inside of the grip, our frame. They just slide back like that again. Very low uh, mass, low, low bore axis on this firearm. So pull this back again. Line those, align those two lines. Slide stop, slide catch back in there. Push hard. Let me come off camera for a second and use two hands and check for function. And we're reassembled. So. There is a close-up look at an unboxing of a very awesome original Wonder 9, the CZ75. This is the BD version. As always, thank you guys so very much for watching the Arkansas Gun Gang.